Hi guys, it's Angie Bell with my fairy treasures. Okay, I'm starting a new Angie's Angel, a new piece here. And I have some accoutrements, if you want to say, <coughs> around me. <coughs> and maybe I should talk about that. Um, <coughs> on my desk, I on my creative desk here, I always have little things around me, and I've shown them before. Um, I have candles burning when I'm creating um, things that inspire me, things that uh, make me feel safe, things that make me feel creative. So I have these beautiful candles. So I kind of encourage you when you're going to do your art, just you have these things that you're always collecting. Start putting them around you like when you create. And it's just um, it makes your process more meaningful, more magical. Um and you're create you're, you're you're collecting all these things for a reason. So start using them as a part of your experience when you sit down to create. And I think you'll really really enjoy that process. So also in front of me, which you can't see, I have these. And these aren't expensive things. I love mushrooms. I got these at Dollar Tree. I think mushrooms are beautiful. They are precious. The candles I got from Dollar Tree. I love this mushroom. Okay, so I feel like I have nature around me. I have light around me with these beautiful candles. Dollar Tree. Also, I think I got this at Daiso. I love um, this beautiful, beautiful statue. She looks like a goddess to me. Very protective. So, I put all these things around me when I create. I always have them. They're usually a little bit further out from me in the corners of my desk here. But I've started um, going ahead and um, bringing them in closer when I create. So, let's get busy. Okay, so this piece here, I just came up with a name for her. I, I drew her out. And her name is One With Nature. And... The thing about it is, is I don't always like have a big theme when I draw. What I do is I collect, I collect things. I'm a collector. So I collect art, pictures, magazine photos, um, different pictures. And when I want to create something, I, I think, what do I want in this painting? What kind of things am I attracted to? And I love deer. I love deer antlers. I love deer. I love roses. I love jewelry and beads and so and leaves so in this piece I did the my and I love wild roses so this is my vision of a wild rose especially the one here on top and these are some of the little smaller flowers but this wild rose I love leaves I love um, deer so that's what the horns on her represent and I love jewelry I love beads so I brought all of this together and so as we, as I, we're going to do work on her face today. And so as I work on her face, I will let you know why I love deer and why I love the wild roses that are in this. So, but let's first get started. So I'm not just talk, 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 talk. <laughs> All right. Let me come in close on her face and let's bring this up a little bit. Okay. It's even coming a little bit closer. Yeah, that's nice and close on the face. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, I have another candle here, which I love, which is a little bit in my way. So we'll put that one over there. All right, because I need to bring my water closer to me. I got a lot of goodies over here, but I need my... I need my, my, uh, my water. Okay, let me get my brush out that I love to use. You know, I also have a Jane Davenport brush I love to use, and I haven't been using it lately. And I'm going to get that out right now. I can find it. I know I can find it. It's over here in my little stash of stuff that I love to use all the time. Okay. This brush right here is a retractable brush. It's a Jane Davenport. I absolutely love it because of that pointed brush. You guys know I love a pointed brush. You can do everything with a pointed brush, in my opinion. Okay. This Jane Davenport brush is like 10 bucks, so it's not cheap, but I did use a coupon on it, or I got it when it was 30% off. So that's always a way to go. 
Okay, so I always like to start off with this gelato, and it's called beige. <laughs> it's real simple. And, um, and that's just to get rid of the white page and put a base for her skin. And do you have to use a gelato beige? Nope. You guys know me. I always say there's more than one way to skin a cat. That might not be the best term. Anyway, there's more than one way to do something. So if you have watercolors, because that's really what a gelato is, basically. And um, it's a water-soluble crayon. So you could get out your paint and see if there's like a beige color for your paint. This is also, if you're going to do light skin tone, this is, I think, a great base color for a lighter skin tone. And let this be the, 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 the skin color and then start your shading on top of this. But this is going to be like the understory for a darker skin tone for me. Okay. And we'll go down to the chest area. This girl's getting a little sassy. Look, all the way down to here. Okay. So her chest area goes here, and then there's her chest ending there. Okay. Wipe out my brush. Okay, so we're done now with the gelato. With that gelato. Okay, so next, I love this color, and I talk about it all the time. It's my base for my skin tones. I probably should buy a couple more of these because if Jane Davenport ever stops making these, I'm going to be, like, so sad. Okay, so this is um, her inks, her uh, water solute, her um, incredible inks, and it's tinsel. And I believe it's permanent. I should know that. Yeah, it can't be. It's not like watercolor where it can be erased out, I believe. Because it's ink. Like once it sets in. <clears throat> you guys, I got these wonderful palettes. I'm going to share these with you guys. I got these wonderful palettes at, um, where did I get them at? Daiso. Aren't these fabulous, you guys? I don't know if you can see right now because I'm so far in. Okay, this is a palette. I'll, I'll show you this palette again. But these are fabulous. I got these for $1.50. These kind of palettes would not cost $1.50 at Michael's. So if you're at um, Daiso and you see these and you like to watercolor and you want to be able to save your watercolors, now it's not going to save your inks from drying out because, um, or even your watercolors, but you can reconstitute those. But um, you can't reconstitute, like I said, you can't reconstitute your inks because they dry out. So I am right about that. I was just thinking, I'm like, am I right about that? Yeah, I am because they dry up in this palette. So it's not airtight. But watercolors, it, you know, it's fine. They dry out anyway. And then um, they dry out anyway. And then you can reconstitute them with water. So they are really great for watercolors. And right now I'm using them for my inks too. But I actually bought another container for my inks that I think is airtight from Dollar Tree. So I'll let you guys know how that works out. So now the skin tone is going to be this color right here that I'm putting on. I don't know if I said it, it's tinsel is the name of the color. It's the name of the watercolor. And I absolutely love this color. It's great for a deep skin tone. Isn't that pretty? Absolutely gorgeous. Oh, okay. 
Let's talk about the elephant in the room, which is the fact that I already did half the hair. Okay. I was so busy talking about creating a beautiful space to create in that I <laughs> state the obvious here. Um, as you can see, I've start, I've done one side of the hair and, um, and I did that because so that, um, the next video we can do this side of the hair, but I wanted to get a head start and to show you what the hair is going to look like. So, and I do that to kind of control the videos because my videos can get so long as you guys know and have like six parts. So I'm going to stop that because I think that's just like overkill. So I had some problems with my camera turning off last time. That's why the videos aren't, it could have been done in like four videos, but anyway. So, um, I'm going to start trying to get these in three or four parts instead of like six. Anyway. All right. So let me dry that. And this is the thing too, when you're working with watercolors or inks, if you feel like anything's uneven or not exactly like you like, dry it first or let it start drying and then change it because a lot of times it's going to be perfect once it dries. So. Fighting my little candles here were being challenged with that blow dryer. They're like, girl, are you trying to blow me out? <laughs> okay, let's do some shading. I'm going to do some shading with purple. And I'm going to switch brushes. I'm going to switch to this one right here. Master Touch um, has some really nice watercolors. And I really like their uh, brushes, their watercolor brushes. All right, so I'm going to start shading with purple. Um... I got to look at some things here real quick. Let's see, because I, my, for some reason, my things fell out. I think that goes over there. So let me just look and see what colors are what. Yeah, that's the darker one. And I think this is the lighter purple here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Perfect. And that's what's nice too. Once you've worked with your, um, your, your colors, you really start kind of um, realizing what what's what without even always having to test it out. Okay, so we're going to start shading. Let me just get rid of some of this color on here with this purple. I love purple to shade with. Plus there's so much purple in my um, work here just <laughs> there's always usually purple in my work who am I fooling um, that it looks like it's also um, the colors bouncing off from the hair onto the face which I love so what I'm doing too is I'm just um, taking my brush and kind of just pouncing on the edge so it blends out a little bit so it doesn't leave like a harsh line And something else, I never discuss the paper I'm working on, and people are always asking me that, and I always have to. I'm only working on cardstock, and let me tell you why. Because I like to make my drawings, and then after I make my drawings, I like to make a copy of the drawing. Well, I would love to put watercolor paper, or mixed media paper, really, not watercolor, because I need a mixed media paper, through my printer, but it doesn't go through. But I did see people working with like a light box or something, and then they're able to uh, trace over their art onto their watercolor paper. So I might start doing, not might, I am going to start doing that. So if I, I, I even think I have something I can use for like a light box. Anyway, I got to work that out. All right, so I'm going to continue shading. All the way around. I'm gonna go heavier in here and underneath the eye. Okay. 
Okay. But as I get down towards the chin, I'm going to get a lot thinner. some color in there and that's blended out a little bit and I'm not saying that I watercolor perfectly or this is the right way to watercolor because it probably isn't but um, it's the way I do it I've learned from other girls I've seen them doing it and I like that technique so this is what I do We're going to let that settle a little bit. And that's what I kind of like about watercolor. It really teaches you to like stop trying to control everything so much. Because I'm a control freak. And, uh, and not like I want to control other people. But whatever is in my aspects of my life, they're going to affect me, you know. Because I think I grew up around a lot of chaos, and so I don't like chaos. I like to know what to expect. So, um, that's probably, you know, that's, I'm sure that's why I am the way I am. But watercolor teaches you to stop trying to control so much. Like when I put water on the edge of that and let it uh, bleed out, I can't control how much that bleeds out. I'm going to have to accept how much it bleeds out, which is cool. That's a big lesson in life too, accepting uh, the way things are. It's not a big one. Because Lord knows I haven't wanted to do that. And that's damaged me a lot by not accepting the way things are, trying to make things the way I want them to be. And uh, dangerous way to live because you can't control everything and you need to accept the way that things really truly are and see how things truly are. And that's what watercolor does, represents to me. You can't be controlling it. You gotta accept the way it flows out. Doesn't mean if something's dangerous that you stick around, no, leave. But I mean, it'll help you protect yourself better and to move to this world a lot better if you can stop pretending things are one way when they're really another way. I don't know if my babbling on is making any sense, but hopefully for somebody it is. Okay, so I'm loving that. Okay. And let's do a little bit of shading with this purple up at the nose. I love my beat my beat it bracelets, but they're kind of getting in the way. Let me see if one I can keep one on. Nope, I can't. Okay. Ooh, hopefully I'm in frame. You know, I need to come out a little bit because you guys aren't seeing like when I went down to the chin. Sorry. You know what let's just do this because then you need to see the neck area too so sorry about that uh what am i doing oh the nose putting some shading on the nose coming right up into the, the eyes
And that's also going to start your eyeshadow too. So now you've got some purple eyeshadow in here and you got your shading on your nose. Okay. I'm going to add a little water, especially right here to bleed out a little bit. In my case, to lose control. <laughs> Okay, and then let's go down to the neck and start shading also. I think I'm going to do it all deep down here. I'm going to stop right there because I want to add some blue in too. I'm going to add that in. Um, I'm going to add in this beautiful blue right here. It's called Butterfly for some more shading. Uh, where can this color go? Get rid of that. There we go. All right. I'm going to add that blue right into here. I love blue and purples for shading. I think it's really pretty. We'll throw a little bit of shading over here. Underneath the neck right there. Just a little bit on this side. Okay. And we'll let this put a little water on this. This bleeds out. You guys like how I how I say bleed out? <laughs> Someone will be like, okay, is she talking about art or the human body? <laughs> we'll let this bleed out. Sounds horrible. But it's not. We're not doing anything horrible. <laughs> We're not letting anybody bleed out. Okay. I know some of you guys are like, girl, your sense of humor is weird. Pretty. And I want to talk about it for a second. Why I chose um, some of the things I've chosen. Because I started looking at that. I started thinking, why am I choosing the... Um, the different elements to put in my paint in my drawings and I don't do it uh, consciously I do it subconsciously I gather the things that I want to put in my paintings and I collect these type of things everywhere if I'm at Dollar Tree if I'm at a store or if I see a, a magazine or if I see uh, something at anywhere I take pictures and so I gather these things around me to include them in my paintings and so the deer antlers. I love deer. Like I said, I love wild roses and I love the leaves. I love jewelry. I love beads. And so I looked at it and I thought, what does, um, I'm going to let all this dry a little bit. What does, um, one second and I'll keep talking. I just want to make sure I'm grabbing the right color. Yeah, there we go. What does, um, like the deer antler, what does that mean to me? And I love deer. They became my spirit, one of my spirit animals, because my other spirit animal animal is a um, is a hummingbird. But um, so you, so it's like, well, why did a deer become your spirit animal? I was uh, when my kids were little, we went up into U went to Utah and we um, stayed in this cabin and we were on these jet skis which was truly unsafe now that I look at it today. I should not have been doing that with the kids because it was very unsafe. But what was beautiful though, and we had a guide and everything, but I don't think he knew what he was doing. Anyway, um, these deer, and it was a family of deer, like, I don't know, six, seven, eight deer. We're, we stopped for a second and these deer just appear. And it was like magic, you guys, like just appeared out of the forest. like. One minute, there were no deer. 
and next minute there was a family of deer. It was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. And I was like, oh my God. And they were so beautiful and graceful and, uh, and together, I mean, as a unit, you know, just all supporting each other and just beautiful. I just was like, and so magical because how they appeared out of thin air. And then, so we enjoyed watching them for just a minute or two. And then they melted right back into nature, just like magic again. And I was like, those are the most magical, mystical creatures I've ever seen in my life. And I've only had a few experiences like that in my life where it's like affected me like that, where I'm just like, oh my God, that was awesome. So I'm throwing some blush on the cheeks here with, uh, a, friend, a color of Jane's called Best Friend, which I love. And I put that same color on the lips. So um, that's where my love of deer started coming from was when I had that experience. So I want to share that with you guys because probably you're like, why are you always talking about deer? Okay, I'm trying to get this on evenly. See, there I go with trying to control things. The heck am I trying to get on watercolor evenly? Oh, am I crazy? All right, we'll let that all soak in. So I wrote down some things about deer and I have a list. I'm going to share it with you guys. Let me just, I just want to blend this out a little bit more. 